Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley at sprinkledwithglitter.com. Thanks for joining me today. Today I am telling you all about finding success with stencils <laughs> and introducing you to this brand new product in the Essentials by Ellen line, Stencils, and this is the Sprinkles stencil set. I think you're going to love this because it's a set of four stencils and all of them are a little bit different. Now I'm going to show you each of these designs so that you can see what you're getting in this set of four Sprinkles stencils. We have some like smaller candy stencils and some larger candy stencils and we also have some circles which could also be confetti or bubbles. Each of these stencils measure six inches by six inches so they're perfect for covering the front of an entire A2 size card and you can flip these over and rotate them so that you get your sprinkles or your bubbles or your confetti in all different positions on your card. So they really are a lot of fun to work with and they're perfect for any celebration. Now I wanted to talk to you about some of my favorite things to use in conjunction with stencils starting out with some blending brushes. Now, if you're using stencils with an ink, you may want to have some blending brushes on hand. I like the smaller ones. Those are from Pink Fresh Studio for getting into specific areas. And I like a larger blending brush for covering a large area in a smaller amount of time. So you can kind of use one or both of these to get the desired effects. Now, I also love to use glitter paste and gels with stencils. And did you know that you can also dry emboss with stencils as well? So there are so many things that you can do with stencils. They're great for adding tone on tone texture as well. Now I love to have a couple of different options for surfaces. I work on a glass mat, but I also find these sticky mats from Misty helpful, or you may find something like the Waffle Flower stencil mat helpful as well. Now this has a little corner there that you can kind of rotate. It's a silicone mat, so you can roll it up to store it. But I love this corner because you can actually push your paper up into that corner to keep it squared up and then you can add your stencils on top, push them up into the corner as well and you'll make sure, especially when you're using layering stencils, that all of your design lines up. Now a sticky mat you may find helpful because it has a little bit of stick to it. It also has a grid, but I like to place my paper in the center of the sticky mat and then add my stencil over the top. This is going to hold my stencil in place on top of the paper. I don't have to put any adhesive on the back of my stencil or around my paper to hold this in place. And that allows me to just go ahead and ink blend right over the top. You may get some ink on your sticky mat, but then you can just rinse it off with some warm water and set it aside to dry and that stick will come back. You can see I actually have a little staining on the sticky mat that I'm using, but it doesn't affect the stick or the use of that mat in the future. Now, when you're using a dye-based ink with a stencil, they're very easy to clean. You can take them to your sink and just run them under some water. If you are in a craft room like I am where there's not a sink available, I often just keep a bottle of rubbing alcohol in my craft room and I will spray it on the stencil and wipe it down with a microfiber cloth. The benefit of the rubbing alcohol is the stencils clean up quickly and easily and it dries very fast so that it's ready to go for the next project that you're working on. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue to build this background here. I've left my paper in the same position on the sticky mat and I've just replaced the stencil with a different stencil. This is the larger dot sprinkle stencil in the set of four. And I'm using Catherine Pooler do -Si do ink. Now the first ink I used was Catherine Pooler Uptown and you can see as I build this pattern, I'm going to add more color and more design. Now these are very forgiving type stencils because you don't have to necessarily position them in one direction or the other for them to work. You can kind of layer them on top. The confetti and the sprinkles are gonna overlap each other in different areas and create a really fun pattern. But if you want to rotate these and flip them back and forth, you can do that too. And that's going to position your sprinkles and your confetti in different areas on your card. So for the third stencil, it was the smaller dots and I used Catherine Pooler Bellini ink. And then I'm also adding a layer with the Catherine Pooler Lemongrass ink. 
Now for the largest of those candy sprinkles, kind of the long skinny ones, I am using Catherine Pooler Aqua Teeny Ink to blend on this layer. Now this will be the final layer that I am adding using inks over my stencils. And keep in mind, you can use any type of ink that you want. You could use a Distress or a Distress Oxide. Any type of dye ink will work for this. You can also use a pigment ink. But for the final layer, I wanted to add a little bit of glitter. So I am going back to the larger round sprinkle stencil. I'm placing it over my paper in a different orientation than I had it the first time when I did the pink polka dots or pink sprinkles on this. And I'm using the Tonic Glimmer Paste in Moonstone and a Tonic Flexible Spatula to just spread it over the top of my stencil. Now, I'm being careful to put a thin layer because I don't want too much dimension and I also want this to dry on the quick side. But I wanted to mention that you do want to wash your tools and your stencils right away when you use something like a paste or a gel with your stencils. I will take them to my sink, run them under some warm water, kind of scrub over the areas where I use the glitter paste, and then I place them in this bottle drying rack. Now, I know that's kind of funny, but it has these little spiky things. And once I've rinsed them with water or cleaned them really well, I can place my tools and my stencils in this and allow them to air dry. Sometimes stencils have really delicate areas and rubbing over them too much, you can kind of pull those up. So I really love this drying rack for my sticky mat, my stencils, and my tools, and then all the water just drains into that lower area there. Sometimes you'll find that your stencils just need a good bath, so some warm soapy water and rinsing them off and allowing them to dry in something like this is a great way to just quickly clean up those stencils. So now I've created that fun sprinkle background. It has the glitter accents on it, and I am going to stamp some images from the party time stamp set from the Essentials by Ellen Line onto some white cardstock. I'm using my favorite black ink. This is the Gina K Amalgam ink in Obsidian. And I'm going to stamp them onto some Nina Solar White cardstock. I am using my Misty stamping tool so that I can stamp a couple of times to get a nice rich black line on these images. Keep in mind, these are brand new stamps. I've never stamped with them before. So they need to be seasoned a little bit. So the first stamping that you get with your stamps when they're brand new isn't always the best image. So I can just double stamp that line and get a beautiful image. I'm also using this Hooray Sentiment. It's from the HB2U stamp set, which stands for happy birthday to you. <laughs> And I'm stamping that in the Catherine Pooler Uptown ink onto that corner of cardstock. And then I'm using all of the coordinating dies, which are available for these stamp sets, to die cut them using my die cut machine. And I'm just going to kind of set them to the side. But man, do I love how these sentiments die cut. <laughs> I think it is so much fun to have a stamped and die cut sentiment. And I love that the Essentials by Ellen line is now including this option for some of their sentiment stamp sets. Now I've die cut that background using one of the Essentials by Ellen essential rectangle dies and I've also cut another layer of vellum and I've layered my stamp images over the top using some foam adhesive and then I added my vellum layer with foam adhesive as well. And now I'm going to take my Hooray Sentiment, add some liquid glue to the back, and just place that at the bottom of my little grouping of black and white images. Now, because my background has so much color, I didn't feel the need to add color to my images as well. So I'm just leaving those black and white. I'll pop that on an A2 size card base, and that finishes off my first card. Now for my second card, I am going to show you a different option for holding your stencils in place. This time I'm using some delicate surface painter's tape to hold my paper in place on the back side of my stencil. And I'm going to switch to a smaller blending brush so that I can selectively ink some of the dots or confetti or sprinkles on this particular stencil. And I'm gonna create kind of an ombre rainbow going down this panel, starting off with the Catherine Pooler do -Si do ink. Now, because I don't wanna cross contaminate or blend the inks too much, I'm very selectively inking some of these polka dots. I'm gonna wipe off my stencil between colors. And I'm just gonna move through the color palette that I used on my previous card and 
For a lot of these, I'm going to wipe off between the colors. So I moved to the Catherine Pooler Bellini ink. Now I'm using the Lemongrass ink. I'll use the Aquatini ink, and then I'll finish off with the Uptown ink. But you'll notice that because I am using the smaller blending brush, I'm able to pick and choose what I am blending in each color. And that gives me a lot of control when I'm working with something like this. A lot of times with a larger blending brush or blending tool, you could absolutely use your foam blending tools for this as well. You're not gonna have the control that a smaller blending brush will give you. So now that I have my background created for this card, I'm gonna work on the sentiment and I'm using that HB2U stamp set again. I'm going to stamp this several times in the ink colors that I've already used. I'm starting out with the Catherine Pooler do -Si do ink, which is, by the way, one of my favorite corally pinks. And then I'm just gonna slide my paper up in my Misty stamping tool and then I'll clean my stamp, ink it in some do -Si do ink, and stamp it again. And I'll continue doing this with the lemongrass and the Aquatini ink as well. And then I have the coordinating die and I am just going to die cut all of these sentiments. Now I'm also going to stamp and die cut the word celebrate from that same sentiment stamp set. And I've stamped that in Uptown ink. And now I'm lining up all of these sentiments using my grid mat to make sure that they're straight. And I'm going to pick them up with the mini misty sticky mat that's going to keep them all in place while i add my foam adhesive to the back and allow me to place all of these sentiments onto my card front at once i love to do this when i'm lining up multiple items you could also use something like press and seal but i find these misty sticky mats are perfect for this because they have the grid lines on them as well and i really love that now for this celebrate sentiment, I'm going to add some liquid glue to the back of it and I'm going to adhere it onto a very thin strip of glitter cardstock just there in the center. Now adhering things to glitter cardstock can be tricky, but if you use a liquid glue and allow it some time to kind of set up, it definitely will work great. You just gotta have the right glue on hand. And to adhere this strip along the side of those sentiments that I've already placed, I'm gonna use a little bit more foam adhesive and just place that along the side so it's going up and down. So I'll pop that card front onto a card base and that finishes off my second card. And now we're going to move into a third card. And this one, I am using the Pyramid Box Party Hat add-on from the Essentials by Ellen Line. I've used both the solid piece and the stripe piece, and I'm going to create a party hat. Now I could die cut these out of some colored cardstock, but I really wanted them to match the colors that I had already used in the previous projects. So I went ahead and just used those same inks and ink blended each of these little stripes to match my previous projects. I used the same colors of ink as before. And then I glued them onto that solid backer piece. And now I'm hitting them with a heat tool because I wanna add some clear embossing over the top of this using one of the stencils just to add a little texture to this party hat. Now, because I don't want the embossing powder to stick to areas where there is not any of this Versamark ink, I made sure that the ink that I blended onto the stripes was dry with my heat tool before placing my stencil over the top. And now I'm just taking my blending brush and just kind of pouncing the Versamark ink through the stencil. I'll remove that from the sticky mat and then pour on some clear embossing powder and heat set that. And it's gonna give me these small little clear polka dots just for a little bit of texture on this party hat. Now I went ahead and repositioned the stencil and repeated that again so I would have a few more of those tiny little confetti sprinkles on this party hat. And I'm going to finish the party hat off with the little pom-pom at the top, which I die cut from some white cardstock. Now I love to do some masked stenciling. And what does that mean? It means actually that I'm stenciling through a stencil. So I want these sprinkles to be just in the center circle area of this card. So I've used some Essentials by Ellen clear plastic. I've die cut a circle from the center of that and I've placed it over my card front and held it in place using a little bit of that delicate surface painter's tape. On top of that, I have placed my sprinkle stencil and now I'm blending some ink through that. 
And this will protect everything that's outside of that circle that I've die cut in the center. And I will only have sprinkles in the circle area of my card. Now I've added a couple of layers of sprinkles using the Dosey Dough ink and the Bellini ink. And now I still have that circle mask in place and I'm blending on just a little bit of Aquatini ink around the edge of this so that you can really have a defined line for that circle. And for the final layer, I'm going to bring in one of the sprinkle stencils again. I'm gonna kind of rotate it onto the card so that it's in a different position. And I'm going to use this Thermoweb Transfer Gel Duo and spread that through my stencil. Now keep in mind, this is another one of those gels or paste that you're gonna to wanna to take your stencil and your tools to your sink and wash them with soap and warm water immediately to keep it from setting up on your stencil. But this is going to allow me to add foil to the areas that I have added the gel. It's very cool. You can either use heat or pressure to apply the foil once it's dry. So I've given this some time to dry and it dries kind of clear looking. It's milky when it goes on, but when it's dry, it's clear. And I can take this Thermoweb Deco Foil. I'm going to trim it down. This is in the color Champagne. I'm going to lay it over the top of my project and then run it through my die cut machine just like I'm die cutting a thin die. That's going to add pressure and cause the foil to stick in the areas where I've stenciled on that transfer gel. So much fun and a fun way to use stencils to add a little foil to your projects. I'm going to pop up this party hat right over the top of it. I've added a foiled sentiment. And this is from the Celebrating You Hot Foil Sentiment Plate from the Essentials by Ellen Line. So here is a look at all the cards once I've added them onto the A2 size card bases. I've added a few sparkling clear sequins on these just to give them a little more sparkle and shine. And I have three really fun birthday card and celebration card designs using these brand new sprinkle stencils from the Essentials by Ellen Line. So there you have it. Those are all my top tips, favorite tools and techniques for success with stencils, along with three really adorable and colorful cards that you can easily create. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you've enjoyed these projects. And most of all, I hope you are inspired to create with your stencils in your stash. As always, I will have links to the featured products used in these projects in the description at YouTube. So if you're looking for something in particular, be sure you check there. Or you can head on over to my blog at sprinkledwithglitter.com. I'll have that linked below as well. Over there, you'll find more still shots, more information, and a complete list of supplies. I want to thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications here on my YouTube channel so you don't miss any of my paper crafting and card making video tutorials. And let me know in the comments below which of these three cards is your favorite. Thanks again for watching and until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.